I want to talk to you just a little bit today about the opener adjustments on the 1590 no-till drills, especially if you're a first-time user. Uh, there's a lot of things on here that you look at and you wonder, okay, do I need to change that or how do I adjust that or what direction does it go? So basically there are three adjustments on the opener. Um, there is a spring pressure adjustment here for the, for, the, for the closing wheel here. There is a spring pressure adjustment for this packing wheel or for this seed firming wheel. And then the one that you're going to use the most uh, is the depth adjustment, which is this little T-handle here, uh, which adjusts in this quadrant uh, on the left hand, on, as we're on the right-hand side of the drill, on the left-hand side of the openers, and it switches to the right-hand side of the openers as we move to the left-hand side of the drill. There are adjustments for both rows of openers uh, on the drill, so it's important that you adjust not only the back openers, but also the front row of openers that's on the drill. So that means when you're adjusting the front row of openers, you're going to have to climb in and out over things on the front of the drill uh, to get things set properly. Uh, down pressure on, on the closing wheel. Uh, in most instances, these closing wheels are, are pretty heavy. Uh, and they're on a long arm, so in most instances you really don't need much down pressure on the closing wheel. Right now this is set in the highest pressure uh, setting. Unless you're dealing with a situation where it's just not closing up that seat trench, I would probably back that off a little bit. Uh, you don't want to create a situation. These things will, they'll actually kind of plow a little bit uh, as you're uh, as you're as you're drilling because they run at a slight well they run at an angle this way of course but they also run at a slight angle uh, longitudinally on the drill so they can get kind of aggressive if you have the pressure set too high and you don't want to uh, you don't want to do that because it's going to uh, potentially change your seed placement uh, more than you want it to so uh, no more than just enough pressure that is necessary to get the seat trench closed up on this uh, the medium position is generally adequate for this firming wheel. Uh, if you are drilling in a conventionally tilled situation, so we've got it plowed and disc and we've got really loose soil, it's probably a good idea to drop the pressure back to, to the bottom notch on both of these, on both the seed firming wheel and the closing wheel, uh, so that you're not just really plowing up uh, that, that soil behind your opener boot. In terms of depth adjustment, depth adjustment is accomplished by pulling up on the T-handle and then moving it up or down in this quadrant. So if we're drilling right now, it's early in the spring and we're doing nothing but forage seedings right now, uh, we're almost always going to be uh, in this back setting uh, on this depth quadrant, which is the most shallow setting on the drill. Uh, rarely will you get past, even for soybeans, uh, something like four notches up would probably be about the deepest you would be and oftentimes you won't uh, you won't have it that, that's set that deep but you want to go ahead uh, do a test section in the field uh, dig a few seeds up and make sure that the seed depth is where you want it to be uh, before you uh, really get started uh, with your drilling operation that way you'll know that the seed placement is about where it needs to be but again all the way back is shallow all the way up is is the deepest possible position. Uh, we talked a little bit when we were talking about the hydraulics of these drills about not running too much down pressure and, and the possibility of losing depth control uh, because of that. The reason for that is if you look at these openers you'll notice that the the depth gauge wheel which is this this rubber faced wheel right here the center line of the axle for that runs behind the center line of the axle for the colder and the opener uh, is dropping seed out right about the bottom uh, axis of the colder. Uh, so what happens is if we run too much pressure on these drills, it will cause the rock shaft uh, that all of the openers are fastened to to over rotate towards the front of the drill. And because of the design of the drill, what happens is, is that these, these depth control wheels actually start to push the seed opener up out of the ground uh, when that happens. So if you're running that gauge up in that red zone uh, and you're starting to see that the left hand wheel on the drill is in the air a little bit, you're starting to lose depth control. You need to back that pressure off a little bit so that the whole drill is staying pretty firmly planted on the ground. Uh, one way to check the pressure to make sure that it's adequate, um, a lot of times uh, what I'll do is I'll have the operator run 15 or 20 feet uh, through the field uh, somewhere on a fairly level spot and have them stop without letting the drill back up any, without letting it coast, 
and then just go along uh, with the drill on the ground and make sure that these are all nice and firm on the ground and if if 90% uh, of the packing or the depth gauge wheels are down firm on the ground and you can't turn them with your hand or uh, as you kick them with your boot maybe as you go along, then you've got plenty of down pressure. You don't need to put any more on than that. Uh, if you've got some of them that'll still spin, uh, then you need to think about maybe putting a little bit more down pressure on the drill. Uh, if you, the drill is not, operate, is not designed to operate into that red range on the gauge uh, without additional ballast. Uh, so. If you're running in that red range, if, let's just say, for example, and we haven't had this for several years, but let's just say that we had really extremely hard soil conditions because of drought conditions and we were having trouble getting seed in the ground, uh, then uh, there's a ballast bar here. John Deere, John Deere front end tractor weights will fit on this ballast bar, uh, and you can add extra ballast to the drill uh, if that would be the situation. It's been really rare that we have run into that with the no-till drills, uh, the 10-foot no-till drills. The 15-foot drills were a different matter uh, because you were trying to get half again more opener in the ground, uh, with not a lot more frame weight. Uh, but uh, but on the 10-foot drills, we haven't had that problem. The only other thing to cover here on the back of the drill is just the uh, the drive lockout, the transport drive lockout. And so, as you're transporting the drill, we would like to see that you have this lockout wheel adjusted out like this and that pulls those pins out so that the drive chains are not spinning while you're dragging it down the road. When you get ready to drill, you're going to turn this like this, uh, turn it counterclockwise. That's going to let these pins pop in. I probably don't have enough slack in the chain to get that to happen right now, but that'll let those pins pop into place uh, as, the, as the drive wheel starts to rotate and it'll engage the whole drive system at that point. Uh, Drive engagement is automatic on these drills, so the moment you start to lower the openers, uh, the cut clutch will engage, uh, and the drive system for both boxes will engage as, engage as long as you have the, the secondary lockout uh, for the grass seat uh, on the drive shaft up there uh, snapped into place. It'll turn as well. So that's pretty much all there is to the opener adjustments on the 1590 no-till drill.